Hello everyone, welcome back in today's tutorial on Unix. In today's tutorial, we are going to see details about process management. So let's start today's session. We should know basics about the process. So what is process? The operating system tracks process through a 5 digit ID and that number is also known as PID or also called as a process ID. Process is one of the tasks in the program. So there will be so many process running. In that process there will be so many activities will be going on. So all these processes are tracked using this process ID or we also call it as a PID. It is a five digit number and it will be associated or will be listed for each process in the system. Each process in the system has unique PID, so the ID will not be repeated again. PID is eventually repeat because all the possible numbers are used up and the next PID rolls or status over. It means, suppose there are several processes are going on and those are completed. In that case, the PID will eventually use the T the number which is used earlier but which is no more active so all active processes will have the unique ids unique process ids however if the process is complete that associated id will be available to next process to use at any point of time no two processes will have same pid it is pid that unix uses to track each process types of processes basically there are two types of processes available first is foreground process and second is background process we'll see what are the foreground processes what are the background processes but meanwhile let's see uh, in unix environment how to identify process in order to identify process you have to use ps command so it will list some details about these processes like PID as we discussed PID is a five digit unique identifier right now it is just four digit but it is assumed that the first digit is zero that means this number is going to increase over the period of time and it will limit till the five characters so let's come back and see what is foreground process or foreground processes by default every process runs in the foreground so that is the default behavior of each process it gets the input from the keyboard and sends output to the screen for example if you do the ls command so that is again a a process so ls is a process so when you list the files in your given directory it is nothing but a process for unix and if it print out the output so it takes the input for example if you do ls something dot txt so the asterisk dot txt is nothing but input from the keyboard and output will be displayed in your screen so th that is the so this ls process will be tracked as a foreground process because because it is taking the input from user and responding back to the screen while a program is running in the pro foreground and it's time consuming no other commands can be run as as the prompt would not be available until program finishes processing and coming out so all the most of the time the custom processes are foreground processes so whatever we write the process mostly accept the input and return the response if there are long running process for example if i updating millions of record through my unix script so to update all the record it will take time like maybe suppose few hours so until that the command prompt will not come if that process is not complete so you will not see the next time that cursor available to execute any other process so this kind of process is called as a foreground process background process a background process runs without being connected to your keyboard so once you execute the process will execute internally and the command prompt will be available to execute any other command 
the big advantage of the background process is we can run other commands because prompt will be available to use how to start process in the background in order to start any process in the background you have to append and symbol at the end of command so all that process will be sent back to run as a background for example if you do ls and dot txt and if you use ampersand sign or and sign it will run this command in the background so you can see this process id also displayed so this process id taking care running the process at the background once the process is complete you can track that process also like if you do ps so you can see if you just enter it it says this command is completed if this process is long running you will you will not see the done as a status it will be in progress something like that you will see and this this process is still running in the background suppose this process is running for the long time it is not going to kill this process but if you just do the star dot txt and don't use ampersand sign and enter it and if this running process is going continuously and if you do the control c the you will be stopping the process you will be killing the process so that execution will abort so normally in real time most of the times we use the process which get executed in the background using ampersand sign how to see process running you have to run the ps command when you run a ps command it will give the pid tty time and cmd what these options are of course we can use minus f option which will give the more details we have the other options such as hyphen a hyphen x hyphen u and hyphen e hyphen a shows information about all users hyphen x shows information about process without terminal hyphen u provide additional information like hyphen a option hyphen e display the extended information so to get more details let's try to use hyphen s for example if you want hyphen a you can use user details if you use ps minus hyphen e it will give the more details about the process let me clear it if you use ps minus as we said there is a other option like x and u let's see what options we get if we use x it will show the more information about the processes which are going on and ps minus u it will give the user information also let's try to use more commonly used hyphen f you will day-to-day -day activities you will see this information so you can see the uid user id pid process id ppid c s time tty time and cmd so let's see what does it means so uid is nothing but a user id that this process belongs to for example here mdm is the user for this bash process mdm is a user for psf which we ran recently the next pid is a process id if you see in this process id is 4241 is associated with bash command 4595 is associated with ps minus f command so these are the process id then we have the ppid parent process id suppose there are multiple processes going on and there will be one process rather than other process so you will see the pid that is ppid is nothing but the parent process id which is starting this process for this bash process the parent process id is 4236 for ps minus pf the parent process id is 4241 that means what are the bash command we are executing its id is the same as the parent id because we are executing in the bash c is cpu utilization how much memory is it's utilizing s is process time how much time take to process tty the terminal type associated with the process so let's see what are this so you see it's uh, cpu usage s time is the process time uh, the tty is nothing but terminal time or uh, terminal type then we have the time and cmd so those are very straightforward meanings time is the cpu time taken by the process and s time is nothing but process start time cmd is command what command we executed so in this case bash command and we have the ps minus f command so it 
executed within second that is the reason there is no uh, milliseconds shown here how to stop process in order to stop process you can for foreground process if you s use the control c the foreground process stop immediately if you want to stop a background process you have to use kill command kill minus 9 and the pid not parent pid if you want to kill parent you have to kill the child and pa then parent this is what the recommendation suppose you want to kill ps minus f like you have to use kill minus 9 and you have to use process id for example let me kill this 4595 which is associated with ps minus f so the command will look like this 4595 this command is already uh, st stopped let's see what it responds give so kill this command no such process because this process is just listing this details so it is already completed so there is no such process available parent and child process each unix process has two ids one is process id that is pid other is parent process id that is ppid each user process in system has a parent process most of the commands have the shell as their parents like bash is a our parent for commands let's have a look on the zombie and orphan process orphan process when a child process is killed suppose if you kill the child process there will not be impact on the parent so parent process is updated via sig chld that is sig child signal then the parent can do some other task or restart a new child as a needed However, sometimes the parent process is killed before it's a child is killed. Suppose you are killing the parent without killing child. In such cases, parent of all process, the init process becomes a new PPID. That is new parent ID will be associated. These processes are called orphan processes because their parents got killed without killing child. Zombie process. When a process is killed, PS listing may still show the process with the status z this process are nothing but a zombie process or defunct process the process is dead and not being used so you will see the the process id but it is not a running process so it's a, a zombie process these processes are different from orphan processes orphan processes are still running those those displayed but those are still running but they don't have parents However, zombie process are not running, but they still show in the memory. It's a kind of the a cache. You can see in the Windows systems, the cache is not real data, but it is just cache information. They have the completed ex uh, the the child processes uh, completed execution, but still have entry. Okay, so zombie process are the completed their execution, but they are still showing in the process entry. There is most important process is daemon process. So we saw there are two types of process, foreground processes and background processes. Within the foreground and background processes, there will be various processes like parent and child processes. There will be some processes called as the zombie and um, orphan processes. Orphan means no parent, zombie means the process is executed, but it is have some references. The daemon process is important process. Daemon processes are nothing but the processes which is running behind the scene and supporting the main process. Daemons are the system related background processes that often runs with the permission of the root and the services request from the other processes. A daemon has no controlling terminal. It cannot open dev tty that is terminal. If we do a ps minus ef and look at tty field all daemon will have a question for the tty so let's try out that if you do the ps minus ef so if you see the question mark so tty if you notice there is no terminal associated with this let me show you the from top if you see tty it is question mark no terminal associated so this process is a daemon process so all these processes with question mark are listed are nothing but the daemon processes 
A daemon is a process that runs in the background, usually waiting for something to happen that is capable of working with. For example, printing daemon waiting for print commands. So printing daemon is continuously running even if we can't see as a ps command. If we do the ps minus ef, it will show us. If we have a program that calls for lengthy processing, then it was to make it as a daemon and run it in the background top command the top command is very useful very commonly used command show the all the information about this most of the information about the currently going processes memory etc it's a very useful tool for quickly showing process sorted by various criteria showing information about physical and virtual memory cpu usage load average and busy processes so let's run that let me clear it if you run just top that is top command it will show all the processes how much memory it is uh, uh, assigned what is the swap memory total memory free memory how much free memory are available use memory etc so all this memory is mentioned here how many processes are running how many processes are slipping how many processes stop how many zombies are there so looking at the zombie you can able to control and you can stop those so by that way you can release those processes or you can kill those processes job id versus process id background and suspended process are usually manipulated via job id so background and suspended processes keep remember this this number is different from the process id and usually and used because it is shorter in addition a job can consist of multiple processes running in a series or at a same time in parallel using the job id is easier than tracking individual process that is these are the differences we have i hope this short tutorial give you idea how to handle the processes how to determine the processes what are the zombie process what are the daemon process etc um if you have any questions or queries about unix tutorial you can definitely mention the comment section of this video thank you again and have a nice time